I know it's not your first visit here. You've already been here 20 years before. How was it then? Uh, it was very different. It was just after the fall of Ceausescu and the communist regime. And uh, I was not in Bucharest, I was in Medias, and then we were in the countryside. I was doing voluntary work for three weeks in a boys school, an internet school, where the internet, I, I don't know what that is in English, yeah. where they was, you know, mm -hmm. sleeping, mm -hmm. they were boarding, a boarding school for boys. Uh, in the summertime doing activities for those kids. And it was, it was for me, I was only 20 years old, so it's actually 25 years ago, so, or something like that. And I was, it was very, very special to meet the scare, the scarcity of, of food, for instance, and, and, and uh, paired with this rich, blooming, wonderful countryside. So it was, so it was a bit, at that time, it, I was a bit scared too. So, so, so this, uh, and, and also I was, I was, uh, it was very special just to, to be with those small boys that were so tender and warm and longing for for love and and knowing that once again when we left they would be left again as their parents had left them at school so they would kind of you know be experiencing another departure so it was very complex uh, experience uh, uh, that was very that's made a mark in me and, and, uh, and it was also kind of scary so so when I got this invitation to come here now I was I, I thought that oh it's it's fate it's destiny that kind of comes around another time and invites me back to 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 enter what was once very scary and uh, and strange and kind of reintegrate and kind of go on and enlarge that so I'm so happy to be to be back. Several things that are important. First of all, it's that I have to find they have to first of all there is a conflict or something that I need to investigate. I, I kind of see my novels as investigations in different uh, conflicts or issues that I have to deal with um, for myself. I have to understand or kind of explore these issues by writing a novel. So, so first it's kind of this issue, this problem, this focus, and then there is, and then I kind of, and this also has a tone or a voice or, or a way of, of a certain entrance into this theme that just a person can can be and and it's kind of finding the voice of that person which is also to give that person uh, some kind of I mean she has to have some kind of employment or work what what is her uh, what is what what's what kind of person is she in the world? Is she? I have a female priest yeah. in one, and in this book, love, uh, the female character uh, is uh, working in the in the bureaucracy with culture, cultural issues, mm -hmm. um, and for several novels, I have a writer as a as a uh, as a character. But also, uh, in my latest novel, I have a female artist making expositions. Mm, lots of female painters. So I think it's a lot of kind of art issues uh, often. But that's kind of to find to find a person that can kind of be the be the kind of 
what's, what's it called in English? Be the, be the figure that kind of concentrate the plot. Yes, and whom is going to kind of be my agent in exploring these questions. I think I think all my novels are they they start with a very very personal need to to do this investigation into some some question, uh, but then it I think this is very strange because I, I I have no I have no limit in. In kind of using myself for my own experience or my, my life or uh, my history, uh, but on the other hand, it is very important for me that the novel is actually a novel that the novel is actually fiction that it is not me and this distance uh, that is not a way you know you could think that it would be a way of protecting myself. It's not. It's more like a space that I have to have, this distance becomes a space that I have to have in order to, to, to let the novel work as a novel on its own, because it's not me anymore, it's actually a novel, it's a construction, it's something very abstract, but of course also very concrete, because it's human beings moving around. But yes, it's, it, it, it really has they're very, very close to me, and I, I need my novels, I need to write them, I really do. Yeah, that is one of the large gifts, for instance, now being here in Bucharest, uh, uh, that I had no idea of when I started to write, but uh, it is it's the best way to go anywhere is to to go with my books when somebody invites me and as today I came I landed on, with the plane and I come out and you stand there with flowers welcoming me and that's that's wonderful and and to kind of, and also because uh, traveling with my books or for the reason of the book gives the meeting with other people, it, 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 we have a kind of a common ground with it, which is the book and literature in general, often or culture. So, so it's it's not you know just accidentally meeting someone someone in the street in another country. It is actually meeting someone that have uh, often uh, some kind of deeper connections. Uh, into fields that uh, that are important to me and to them, and so it's kind of very often very rich human meetings too. So so it's a wonderful way to to travel. I'm so grateful for that. Mm, I don't have a favorite novel of my own of my own because I I. I really love them all, and they are they have helped me helped me grow in my life. And the one couldn't, I mean, one novel couldn't be written without me writing the ones before. So they kind of they're in the chain. So they're all kind of I have them all. So so I don't have a favorite. I really like them all and their differentness, but. And a favorite book. I often think that the book I'm actually reading right now is my favorite book. So it's you know it's the one I'm about to read. Um, the one I'm about to read right now is I just read Emily L by Marguerite Duras, which is a novel I read when I was nineteen, twenty, um, which has been very important for me. Although so it was wonderful to read it again. So that's maybe one of my favorite books. But and the one that I'm reading right now is uh, A Little Original Sin. It's called A Little Original Sin, and it's by, uh, I think it's Millicent Dillon. It's a biography about Jane Bowles, the American writer. Yeah. 
I think my method is just trust. I, I, I trust I trust what comes and I trust following uh, and I, tr I trust this kind of waiting and accepting and receiving. So that's kind of my my way of writing. I don't I don't force and I don't I, I don't kind of speculate and think but I kind of receive whatever you know comes around and, and I use it. Yeah. Because also I think that it is bad, I can take it away. Uh, but, but usually there is a reason for things to come. Uh, so when accepting them, they kind of, you know, seem to, f to have their own organic necessity in, in the story. Yeah, so... Yeah. yeah. So now please read for us uh, a fragment and then I will read the, the Romanian part. Good, then I'll read the very first. I'll just show you the Norwegian. It's from the snow and the cold. And the title in Norwegian is, in Norwegian is called Tarnet. Oh, it's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a tough word. So, I'll just read the four first lines in Norwegian. When I was young, I was going to go to the house. Så långt det bara går an. Se ut av vinden på fjäll och byar och sjö. Snacka med folk från främmande land. Var samman hela tiden. Aldrig kommer fram. Kan den som har inbått till näsk var en plekande och inte råkar att rea på främmande. Kött mig departe på potinsa. De la färastra lui vom admira munt och oras och kjaper. Vom kunnaste alls vamen din ser strejne. Och vom fin pröna med rö. Och inte så dat nu vom ajung till la destinatie. It's very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Too. How uh, a little bit of Romania. Uh, how did you find it comparing with the Romanian you discovered when you came first here in 1991? How is now your Romania? It is much more diverse, and the first time was, you know, a bit scary, but now it has been very warm and generous meetings with people and I'm so impressed by all the young journalists coming so well prepared and uh, asking thoughtful questions and also I'm very intrigued by Bucharest and, and the complexity of this of, of this city and the way it is kind of you know in the change so it's, it feels like a place you, you know you have to come back to quite soon to kind of, you know, to follow the process because it's like, it's in the middle of, of quite, you know, quick change, so it's 
almost like you know a baby when it grows. You have to see it every day to kind of follow the 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 uh, you know the changes. So uh, and also I'm I'm impressed by by the by the very uh, the will to kind of that I've met here, the will to, 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 to use new medias as right now we're doing an interview that's going to be published uh, on the internet and, and I think that it's also interesting and quite, you know, a good thing that, I mean, you come to somewhere uh, that has been, you know, closed and has, during the communist time and has this kind of heavy history and then you are the one to kind of, you know, really grasp all the new ways of communicating. And I think that is thought, thought uh, aspiring uh, and something to, 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 to take back. Yeah. I always love my readers <laughs> because, well, you know, the ones that are actually approaching me are always do it because there is something in the book that they can connect to or react upon and that has touched them or enraged them or, you know, in some way kind of, you know, reached them. And, and, and I, I think that's such a huge gift to, to meet someone who has been, you know, that my work has in some way, you know, touched. So, and, and people are, I think that's also a wonderful thing about literature that you read, I write my books, I'm all alone, I write them all alone, sitting for myself, and then you read it, and you're all alone, and you read it for yourself somewhere, and and then we can kind of, you know, meet from a very kind of solitarian place in ourself, which is the reading and the writing. It's somewhere we are very alone with ourselves and our own emotions and thoughts. And then, and then we meet, and and uh, this kind of having been through the same journey, yet always, you know, a different journey for each person. The text is always different for for all of us, but, but still we have kind of, you know, uh, been wading into the same kind of landscape. So the meeting has, you know, this kind of depth or there is another room behind the meeting that is the reading. And even though we do not, you know, actually uh, talk about this, even even the reading experience, kind of, you know, knowing that that room, that space is a space that is shared in some way makes the meeting, you know, more dense and more filled and, and, uh, and that's, that's a very uh, warming and inspiring and, and, and giving experience, I think, yes. On the literary debate held on the 19th of March uh, on the Contem National Museum of Contemporary Art, uh, you talked about the, the difficulty in finding a proper definition for love. Uh, do you think that literature or your literature has any power in offering any kind of answers for those big questions that we are preoccupied with? Well, I don't think they actually give answers, and I don't have any answers myself either, but, but I, I think that uh, literature and my books, for instance, my novels, they are, I look upon, it's interesting because we were there in the National Museum of Contemporary Art because there was this exhibition of Norwegian architecture, and architecture has to do with, you know, space and room, and I think, uh, and that is also very important in my writing, this kind of space notion and room and this being. And I think that literature, it doesn't 
offer answers, but it offers a room to investigate questions in a way that is experiencing these questions, not, uh, not, not only you know intellectually finding you know answers, but but more uh, going into a room and feel how is it to be here, and then I think we we learn something about the complexity of these questions that is not possible to learn in another way. Um, and I think the experience is maybe the best answer we can ever have to, to these kind of ongoing life questions. So to me, novels are rooms or spaces that we can be in and explore and have with us as rooms inside us when we go on. So. That's very interesting. Uh, I, I didn't know. Well, I, I, I've been in Bordeaux, uh, which is, you know, this city in the south east of France. Uh, uh, I, I was there uh, four or five days in 2009, I was launching a book that was translated into French and I was there, you know, doing readings in different bookstores and libraries and, and I, as al always when you are, you know, uh, on these kind of journeys during the day, except from here in Romania because you are so clever to kind of make the days all filled but normally the days are quite empty so I have a lot of you know free time so then I love to walk around the city and I think in some way that something in there must have made an impression on me because suddenly that kind of you know it kind of emerged or raised inside me this kind of picture of this large open space in Budo where I had actually you know somehow been and I had some very strong images in my head of uh, a horse wagon, uh, like a calèche, like what they had, you know, 150 years ago or 100 years ago, they used this uh, with horses. And I had that picture in my head at this place, and it was very strange. And it was, and those, and it was also some pictures of this place with a guillotine. Uh, and all, just glimpses of, of, of images and also this image of you know looking down your own legs and seeing just the legs as you, you, you can't see you know you can't see your whole body when you're looking down yourself but you can see your, your legs and your feet and, and and what I saw was a pair of black trousers you know the end of them and then some very black shiny shoes and it was very intriguing because I didn't know whether it's male or female shoes. Was was I a woman or a man? What was this all about? And these images were kind of, you know, very strong and, and I felt that, oh, here is a novel. And these images were also very intriguing because I, there was this feeling in them and this sensation that these pictures, this all of this had to do with sexuality and with something uh, and with something dangerous uh, and, and painful and I was just thinking oh no no do I have to do I have to go here do I have to write this and but of course I mean that's how I write so, so I know that okay there's no way around this I have to go through so 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 I just sent my you know my personage my 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 herring I, I, I sent her to this open large place without without knowing at all what was going to happen starting with these images and then the story evolved from that being a love story about sexuality about this woman who's who loves this man they meet the novel opens with, with will you meet me uh, and that is their story she falls in love with him he falls in love with her but but the problem is that she kind of she really wants to make love with the man she loves, but but he has another kind of sexuality. He is kind of he says that he has this sudden pornographic lust, and that is not 
she is not included in that. So he kind of wants to have a relationship with her, with no sexuality. He kind of takes that away from the from the from the relationship. Uh, so he kind of defines that, and she and she loves him all the same, and she kind of wonders, you know, is there something? Is there something in having that way of sexual lust? I mean, what about my lust? What, what is my lust? What? So she kind of goes into investigation about herself and her own sexuality. Uh, and it's still kind of this, you know, longing for to share a love and to share it completely with him. Also, you know, the physical love. Because we are physics, and I think love is in the heart. So, yes, that's the novel. I, I really hope it will be translated into Romanian. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, could we have the chance you to have found here a, a large open space here in Bucharest to write about? <laughs> that's a wonderful. That's a wonderful question. Yeah, well, you know, the funny thing is that I never know when I'm there, but but. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, that would be great too. I have a new book that I'm, I just finished writing that will come out this fall. Uh, and I have, I really want to write a play. And uh, I'm quite, I know a lot about it. So I'm, so I'm kind of, you know, putting other things away to, to make space to, in my days to kind of jump into this play. So that is what I'm going to do. Um, and then, I don't know, I hope I'll fall in love. That would be great. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.